alcohol nearly destroyed my life and it took me not one, not two or even three stays in psychiatric hospital to quit. No, it took me to nearly losing absolutely everything and being at the lowest of the low point I've ever been in my life before I decided, hang on a moment, I should probably stop something here. But I did and it changed my life radically and it just increasingly gets better time after time. And in this video I'll walk you through how it happened and how I overcame it. So to understand the place that I'm at now, I'll have to take you from where I came from, how I started alcohol, how I continued to take alcohol and how it nearly destroyed my life. We'll start in high school because that was essentially the catalyst of where everything went wrong. Life was good, you know. My mother was about to marry a really nice man, John his name was. Educated, physically fit and also really involved with me and I was 13 at the time. My mum had split with my biological father when I was 5. That relationship didn't work out. Yet yeah, John had been with us since we were 9. And since then, I had an exceptional period of self-growth. I felt safe, I felt comfortable, his presence was warm. I finally had a father figure that I always wanted. I was top of the class. I was in a golf team and going towards the nationals. Regularly involved in and out of school activities like football and such. Life was good then. I had some really warm and comfortable period of my time when I remember back. I all took a downhill turn though when John contracted aggressive stomach cancer and died within six months. The deterioration and what he went through was brutal, no kid should ever experience that. But we did and loads of kids do in this day and age. As a young boy that was really hard to take man I looked up to and admired had been taken away from me in one foul swoop. This was the catalyst for me of course. My safety, the comfort in the home and my routines had been smashed to pieces. I was quite a mess and I headed straight for the bottle after that. Complete head first. Now it's not what you're thinking okay. I didn't just go to the shop and buy hard liquor, I was 13 at the time so it would have been quite hard to do that. No, it was it was actually more gradual than that. I stopped achieving at school for example, my grades slipped down the floor. I had teachers take keep me behind class and ask me what was up. I was doing so well last year and this year I'm a mess. My heart to the trained eye was entirely visible. And this led me down a really dark path. I stopped hanging with my regular friends and began hanging with rougher, more colourful friends, let's say. This isn't a diss at those people though, I'm still friends with some of them today and these are good, decent people. But mostly you hang with the people that feel the same as you. I hurt so I hang with people that mostly hurt. There was a longing for belonging that wasn't there before, but essentially my family had been ripped up apart and I was longing to belong somewhere because I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere anymore. And that's where I found alcohol. Alcohol was easily accessible in a street gang. There was boys that were older than us and happy to go and get alcohol for us. And Oh boy, the alcohol. It's amazing I even started it, but I did. Now, before I go on, I haven't mentioned this before yet in this video, but I was a young boy who was entirely full of anxiety, which later in life I found was autism. I've done a few videos on it before if you want to check out that. It wholly explains my social awkwardness and uncomfortableness in groups. It was only a matter of time before I found alcohol and especially in the 90s in that day and age and what was popular back then. But we all just thought I was shy but actually it turns out I had autism. In alcohol it solved all my problems, every single one of them. It was like the god's nectar, god's gift to me was alcohol. I was superman under alcohol. 
and I was no longer afraid to hang and talk in groups. I could walk right up to girls and talk to them, and for a long time too, and not feel awkward at all. Alcohol solved a lot of issues for me, and it was great. But as things happened, because I was in a gang and my life was going nowhere, my dad, my biological father, eventually grabbed me in the spring of 1999 and took me down to work in his computer business to essentially get me away from the bad life and integrate me with more decent people. And to be fair, that was my dream since I was a kid to do a job like that. This, in my mind, was my new beginning. I won't go into my job history too much, but let's just say I've been around the block a bit. And it's safe to say that working with my real dad didn't work out and I ended up having to work in catering, bar work, dishwashing and so on to make ends meet. But in all fairness, that's where I made my foundations in England, my new home. Essentially, my friends and contacts. I had finally made a place for myself. I had that belonging that I always wanted. And friends I made and good ones at that. They're still my friends today and I visit them regularly. But yeah, I still ended up in the psychiatric hospital in the secure unit. Because in the end, I ended up going over the top with my drinking. I couldn't stop. I was on a good thing. It made me feel better. So off I went. Alcohol may solve many problems at the beginning until it doesn't. Your friends suffer, your family suffers, and ultimately you suffer. But that aside, after it was all done and dusted, I still didn't give up drinking. Crazy, huh? I just didn't want to accept that I was unwell. Because that would mean that I was flawed. And that would mean that I was admitting that I was flawed to myself. Which was essentially what I'd been running from for my whole life. I eventually stopped drinking, of course, and I, I got really drunk one night, drunk beyond belief. Went completely over the top and killed any social credibility, the little that I had left, completely off. It probably wasn't as bad as what I thought it was, but it stopped me going into work. I just, I didn't want to go into work, I was embarrassed, I didn't want to face people. And they let me go. They couldn't have someone that just didn't turn up for work and I remember the night I decided to quit drinking like it was yesterday. I sat in my darkened room with no money, no rent, couldn't pay for electricity, no job prospects, I couldn't even get another job. I had a four year work gap before this latest job. It was a long period of recovery I had after psychiatric hospital so my skills were lacking. All I had was catering work down. I couldn't see a way out of it. All I had down was admin work waiter. Wow. My dreams were crushed. I didn't have anything. I thought my life was over. How did I ever end up here? Because as a kid I wanted to be emperor of the world. And yet nothing prepared me for how radical my life was about to change. After one talk, with a lady at a charity. You see, my rep at the job shop sent me to an open day. Uh, it's where lots of charities would come together and they would try and get on new clients who needed help, i.e. me. And I had felt like I'd been failed by the system time and time again. So reluctantly, I went. I remember sitting with her and her just sitting there listening to me and asking questions at the right time. And it was like for the first time ever, someone understood me, understood what I was going through, understood my life's problems. I'd never met anyone like this. It was so emotionally freeing. I'd never experienced anything like this before. It was someone that I actually knew and could pinpoint where the things in my life were going wrong and why that was the case. This was almost like witchcraft and it was weird because no one and even my immediate family understood what I was going through and that was really really hard because I always felt like I was an outlier, I was an odd bud, I didn't fit in. 
and for the first time ever I felt like I was going somewhere where I fit in, where I was understood, where people got me. So I signed up <laughs> as soon as I could and she told the people that she'd take me. Of course under the condition that I didn't drink. And this is where I met my demons and also this is where I understood that they existed and came to terms with them. And I was at that place for four years and the most notable experience for me by meeting my wife and having my child is I cozied up to my demons there, I shook hands with them, I was like hello mate how are you, you're part of myself, I understand why you exist, I understand that if I don't keep you in check I can be a really bad person and I finally understood that most people have these demons and that I was normal and I wasn't actually a bad person after all. I also met my wife there and she was on a three month building her stamina kick. Well we hit it off instantly. She didn't have any mental health problems like I did so in the end she became my mental crutch and I became her physical crutch. It's sort of like a partnership made in heaven really. 14 years we've been married today. And we had a kid too and if you're wondering how that went well he's 14 he's the captain of his chess team at school and he's in the top one percent of his mathematics group so it's going really well but he goes through the same things as i did and thankfully i'm there to help and my success in life was purely down to stopping the drink I went to blast on pass through any goal I'd ever written down for myself, any goal, just smashed it beyond all belief. I achieved more out of life so far than I thought I ever would, ever, and I'm happier now than I ever think I would have been had my life not went on a darker path. But it all started with the drink. And giving up drink was the easy part, staying sober was the hard part, that was what was really hard. I remember the first few weeks when I started it off, there was a massive activity gap there, I just had nothing to do now for 80% of the day. I realised very quickly that I needed to fill that in or I was going to get bored and start on the drink again. And that's actually where most people fail. When people come off alcohol, they're usually destroyed their life quite a bit and there's a lot of picking up the pieces and connecting the dots again and sometimes that can be so hard so it's just easier to pick up the bottle again. So I'm not dissing anyone who stru has struggled in the past. I was very young and it was very easy because I hadn't made many mistakes. I will definitely say yet because if I continued on drinking I would have made a lot more. And this was me now. I now sat personless as my friends all went down to the pub and had a jolly old time in the summer beer garden sipping ice cold beers. I still miss that. I will admit that I still miss having an ice cold beer on the beer garden on a hot summer's day and that was a hard time to give up. I didn't know what to do, I'd never explored any hobbies or I'd never explored anything about myself, what I like versus what I didn't like. I had a TV and a computer and computing wasn't even mainstream or ubiquitous back then. And I lived in a village so the reality of the matter was the only thing to do was go to the pub and drink because I didn't know how to drive, I didn't have a car, I didn't have the money for a bus to take me anywhere, I was essentially stuck. Now, I got stuck spending two years watching reruns of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've talked about this a lot, good old Buffy. And she was on repeat after work, but I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. I really wouldn't. This was incredibly difficult. And I was only able to do that because work gave me peace. About 70 to 80% of my free time was spent at the charity doing work so that really interested me so I had enough of my time taken up. 
if I could do it all over again though, I would pick up a book and I would join the library and I would explore what I like doing versus what I don't like doing and I'd pick up a newspaper and see if there was any clubs and like groups that I would like to do. I would fill my time with as much interests and hobbies and, and work stuff that I just wouldn't have time to think about settling down and having a drink. And back then, the internet wasn't even mainstream as it is now. So if it was, I could probably find books and online groups and you just need to do a quick Facebook search group and you'll find loads of groups. So I was a bit disadvantaged back then as to how I could expand my interests, friends, base and things like that. You could even go onto YouTube and find people with similar stories to mine and join their communities. Basically, the, the trick that I found was to fill up 100% of my time with so much activities and things that I enjoy doing that's not sitting in a pub looking at four walls, talking with your friends, gossiping about what's what, that I don't think to pick up a bottle of beer or a glass of vodka. And the interests and hobbies and work, particularly if I enjoyed work, which I was now going down that route. And people have always interested me because previously I've really lacked in that department. So I've had to read books, do it at work, get interested in the psychology behind it and the sociology behind it and social dynamics and all sorts like that. I love that. I continue to read and grow my knowledge. Once you start an interest, you, you grow and build on it and it gets more and more and more interesting as the years go by until you master it. And before you know it, 15 years have passed and you look back and you think, wow, has it really been 15 years since I picked up a bottle of vodka? And thankfully it changed my life. I'm healthier, enjoying life now more than I ever did ever too late to start something new or get a new hobby or get your first hobby even if you're 40. I'm now only gaining an interest in YouTube as you see now. I started at 11 years ago. It didn't really interest me till now because there's a lot of psychology behind it and so on. So it's never too early to pick up an interest or change what you went out to do. I hope that was a good story. You enjoyed my time with me. Um, thank you very much for listening. My name is Raymond Baxter. Please give me a subscribe. Peace.